Good evening, and thank you for joining us. Um, tonight's webinar is on the academic common market, and we want to remind you that you, you're, you are muted, so you may ask questions and by using the Q&A. Your microphone is off again. We also uh, want you to know that you are encouraged to take advantage of the other presentations that are going on. This is just one. Um, if you can't make a session, they all are being recorded and will be available at www.strivescan.com backslash Virginia. The panelists are here and ready to begin. So I am now going to turn off my video and meet myself and turn Turn it over to our panelists. All right, good evening. Thank you guys so much for joining us tonight. Um, we're really excited to be here with you and tell you a little bit more about the academic common market um, and how you can go um, out of state for in-state tuition. So it's a great program um, for students to take advantage of. But first, we'll start by introducing ourselves. Hi, everybody. My name is Cameron Gonzalez. I'm the Senior Admissions Counselor at Coastal Carolina University. Hey everyone, my name is Lily Fowler and I'm an admissions counselor at East Tennessee State University. And hello everybody, my name is Casey Padgett and I'm the regional rep for Virginia at the University of South Carolina. And my name is Amanda Walk and I'm also a regional representative um, and I work with students from Virginia from the University of Tennessee. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm sure a lot of you guys have questions about what exactly is the academic common market. So academic common market is um, and enables students to pursue out of state college degrees at in state tuition rates. So that is typically given to students who are coming from a southern regional state. So the academic common market is a tuition savings program from those selected states um, where we're able to off pursue where students are able to pursue degrees that are not typically offered in their home states so as you see at the bottom and the bottom right hand corner some of the member states that are a part of is alabama arkansas delaware but in this case virginia is a popular one that we do get a lot of our students from so based off of your specific major that you're interested in you might have an opportunity to pay the in-state tuition rate there's over 119 programs available with 48 participating colleges and universities um, with all us four being part of it. And then if you wanted to learn a little bit more information and get a little bit more description about the program, um, you can go to their website down below, or if you need to contact them personally, I have put uh, their address down below as well as their phone number and fax number for you to reach out for. All right, so for some background, um, what the ACM, and it's a little bit easier just to say ACM, so we probably will um, refer to that from now on. Um, so first of all, it is access to uncommon programs. So you'll see a list of all the majors here shortly, and they're going to be very, very unique. So um, it typically is something that you really want to major in. Um, we always recommend that you choose a major because you love it, not because it gives you in-state tuition. It's very, very important because you'll be majoring, majoring in that all four years. You want to make sure that you actually um, have enjoyment from that major. Um, it also is a way to share educational resources. Um, it's just for public schools. So we actually just had um, a question about, about that recently. So um, if you attend a private school, um, these will not be available through a private liberal arts institution. It's just for public institutions only. Um, and there are some for undergraduate and graduate degrees. So possibly if you, you know, when you graduate from your four year degree from undergrad, um, you want to pursue a graduate major. Um, there's also a whole other section on grad degrees. Um, we're focusing just on undergrads for now, but there are um, tons of grad degrees out there that may be different from the undergrad. Um, what the ACM is not 
it is not a financial aid option. So I did just discuss that, but um, you just never know. You wanna make sure that you absolutely want to major in that. That is a career that you see yourself going into. Um, we will kind of get into like the nitty gritty of you know, how long, um, you know, which, which school has a major that gives you in-state tuition and is it possible if it's going to be out-of-state tuition? So we'll just discuss that shortly, um, but that's kind of a reason why you want to make sure it is not a financial aid option. Um, it also is not an athletic scholarship. Um, it's not guaranteed, so states and institutions participate voluntarily. So not everybody who applies will be approved for this, um, and it can be competitive or merit-based. It's not or it's not competitive or merit-based. Um, applicants must meet state residency and college program requirements. So even though it is a part of um, the ACM, each individual college you go to will have their own requirements. So you do have to make sure you keep those in mind and also be in good standing. All right, so as Cameron mentioned, there are 119 different majors um, that are available to students from Virginia at colleges across the Southeast. So West Virginia, Alabama, Tennessee, South Carolina. Um, there's lots of different states that participate. Typically though, what you'll see is if you look at some of these majors that they're usually very unique majors. Um, you know, Virginia is a very big state with lots of great schools. And so if a major is not offered in Virginia, it's probably gonna be one that's very specific. Um, some of the, the ones that you'll see that are available at different institutions are things like petroleum engineering, meteorology, agricultural aviation, um, graphic communications, equine science. Um, one that I thought was really interesting is fire arson and explosion investigation. Um, so these are very, very specific majors. So kind of like Casey was saying, you wanna make sure that it's something you really want to do and that you don't just major in something random to go to a school that you want to go to. So it can be a great program and if you're interested in one of these things it's awesome because these are programs that are very hard to find um, which means that when you graduate there aren't going to be many other graduates in a lot of these programs because they're not offered at a lot of different institutions. So the academic common market can be a way to, to pay lower tuition but also to get a really niche degree that's going to help you when you graduate. So these are just a handful of the 119 different majors that are available at the 48 different schools that participate. Um, but definitely, definitely check out the list. Um, we'll tell you guys how to how to find the list um, a little bit later um, and look and see if any of them are interesting to you. And now you all are probably wondering, how do I qualify for this? So first, um, you need to be a resident of one of the 15 participating states, and you all are Virginia residents, so you qualify right there. Your next thing is going to be selecting an eligible program of study, so whether that's through one of our schools or one of the other um, 48 schools who are participating. Then you're going to need to complete the admissions process at the institution that offers the program, and then you're going to be certified as a resident of Virginia through the state academic common market coordinator. And then the last thing would be just every school um, likely has different policies. So you'll just need to contact your admissions counselor and just try to find out um, what you'll need to do to be approved for the academic common market. Just some quick facts for you guys too, um, just to compare the difference between Coastal Carolina, ETSU, U of, uh, University of South Carolina and Tennessee. Um, we broke it down for you so you can really see the difference in cost for tuition, also our enrollment numbers, student faculty ratio, clubs and organizations. As you can tell, um, you have two medium sized schools and then you also have two large schools. So we did give you an opportunity to really see what each of our campuses look like. Um, if you are leaning more towards a bigger school or if you're le leaning more towards a middle, middle, I'm sorry, medium-sized middle school. Um, student faculty ratio is pretty much all the same across the board for all of us too. And clubs and organizations is also a very important thing to factor in when you're making your decisions for what schools you want to go to because it really will determine your experience these next four years. Of course, tuition, enrollment, and student faculty ratios are important, but also make sure when you're doing these uh, reviews and you're researching which institutions you are really interested in and might and you can see yourself being a part of in the future, be sure to keep those other extra little parts in mind um, just to throw out a few so you can compare all of them. 
and a little bit about Coastal Carolina University. So we are located in Conway, South Carolina. Um, we're actually nine miles from Myrtle Beach. So if you've ever vacationed on Myrtle Beach, that is where we're located. We have been a part of the academic common market for a little bit now, um, and we have three specific majors that focus on the ACM. So that's going to be intelligence and national security, marine science, and middle level education. Middle level education is for anyone who's interested in being a middle school teacher. Marine science is given to anybody who's interested in working with the ocean, sea life, ocean biography, um, marine science, marine biology, marine chemistry, anything along those lines. Here at Coastal, students have the opportunity to not only get a bachelor's in marine science, but we also have the opportunity to give students a master's as well as a doctorate. So our marine science program is definitely top, top notch. Um, and then intelligence and national security is also another one that has really uh, grown and has really stood out above the rest. It's not a spy school, as we say. It's not a police academy or anything like that. What we do is we really focus on the behind the scenes that goes on. So data analysis and cyber analysis, we help students get ready for the career path of working for the FBI, CIA, cyber terrorism, anything along those lines. Now keep in mind if you are applying to Coastal Carolina University and you want to major in intelligence and national security or marine science, we do have prerequisites to get into the program. And I can give you more information about the prerequisites and what those are later on if you'd like. But in order to be uh, to qualify for academic common market, you must be a full major. So you have to meet those prerequisites to be a full major to then apply to ACM through the state of Virginia. And just a little quick information too, just some numbers to show you. I had already mentioned a few of these located in Conway, nine miles from Myrtle Beach. We have just over 10,000 students on campus with a 16 to one student faculty ratio. I really enjoyed this aspect being a student myself because I didn't really like the huge call, uh, like um, the college atmosphere. I really wanted a close relationship with my professors and my classmates. So I really enjoyed the fact that the student faculty ratio was so small. And most of our students are coming from out of state. Virginia is our third most popular state that we get students from. 49% um, of our students are in-state, 49 are out-of-state, and 2% are international. So more than likely on your first day of classes, you will be sitting next to somebody who is probably in the town just next to you. Um, but we are a straight shot down 95. It'll take you about anywhere from five to eight hours, depending on what part of Virginia you are from. Um, but it is an easy transition to get to Coastal. So if you are interested in studying by the beach or you are interested in learning a little bit more about the opportunities Coastal still has, please, my contact information will be at the very end. I'll be more than happy to assist you and answer any questions that you want. So hey everyone, again, my name is Lily and I'm the admissions counselor for ETSU. Um, ETSU is located right at the point of Tennessee. So we're about 45 minutes from that Virginia border, which is really awesome. And we have a lot of students coming from Virginia. Um, these are just some of our programs that uh, are a part of the academic common market. Uh, the first ones are Bachelors of Science in Engineering Technology, and you can concentrate in manufacturing, construction, or biomedical engineering. Our, all three of these con concentrations are ABET accredited. All this means is that whenever you graduate from ETSU, you have um, the engineering technology and con construction on your resume. Um, then when you go to the employer, they're going to see that ETSU has this accreditation and it may just put you um, above the other um, interviewees. And then we have our Bachelors of Science in Surveying and Mapping. Um, this is also ABET accredited, so it's going to have that same um, accreditation. And then also after you graduate from ETSU, a lot of our students who major in the Survey and Mapping have tons of different um, job opportunities once they graduate. And then we have our Bachelors of Science in Public Health. Um, this is for students and they're able to be involved in our public health um, simulation, which is Project Earth. We also have an off-campus um, that's for public health students. It's called our Nice Wonger Village. This was built for students by the students. Um, and then this will just kind of help you learn hands-on if you're going out in the world and exploring. It's really cool. They, teach you how to make brick um, from scratch. So it's just an interesting thing. And then our Bachelors of Science in Digital Media also has a NASAD accreditation. Um, a lot of our graduates have worked on um, movies like The Last Jedi, Thor Ragnarok, um, and then Captain America. Um, so 
We also do a lot of internships with Disney and everything like that. And then these are just some fun facts about ETSU. So we're a division one public school that nearly 15,000 students call home. Where we have students from 71 different countries and 46 different states. Um, we're kind of like a Goldilocks school. Uh, we're not too big and we're not too small. So we have um, all of the resources that larger universities have while also maintaining a small um, campus filled with a 23 average classroom size and a 15 to one student to faculty ratio. We offer over 150 different academic programs that you can choose from. Uh, but if you're interested in the academic common market, then I listed those that are uh, eligible. And then we have 250 different student organizations that you can be a part of, such as um, fraternity and sorority life, academic clubs, professional clubs, and things like that. And then ETSU can be very affordable. Um, if you do the academic call market, you're going to be receiving our in-state tuition, which is roughly about 9500 per academic year. And then on top of that, 92% uh, of our students are receiving some sort of financial assistance. All right, so at the University of South Carolina, we have five different majors. I can give you in-state tuition through the ACM. So I will go ahead and go over them because we do just have five of them. I will briefly describe them. Um, so cardiovascular technology is actually um, new this year in the common market. So we are super excited about that. Um, but if you're somebody who loves the sciences, so you'll definitely have to take those prereqs like um, biochemistry, anatomy, physiology, and you'll be working with heart patients. So you really do um, have that hands-on experience. Um, the program really prides itself on getting internships available for students to work alongside physicians. And um, you can work on diagnostic testing for heart patients and really get in the working field um, upon graduation. The next one is risk and insurance management. And it sounds a little bit obvious, but um, you know, if you're somebody who wants to work with um, security and data analysis in companies, um, you can be an underwriter for insurance companies. A lot of times you can be an insurance broker um, or just um, a lot of times HR as well at, at a company. Um, the next one is marine science, and I think Cameron did a beautiful job describing that, but um, I do get a lot of questions about what the difference is between marine science and marine biology, and I think in the most simple terms, it'd be marine science is more of like the study of the environment um, in marine life, and then marine biology is a study of the animals in marine life. So I hope that kind of helps a little bit, but Cameron for giving those descriptions to us. Um, retail management, so this is actually really popular at South Carolina. It's in the sport management um, degree um, college, and a lot of these students will go on and work for Belk. Um, we've had students work for Kleinfeld, um, the, the uh, wedding dress shop, the bridal store in New York City and Atlanta. Um, you know, you can work for um, any kind of um, uh, clothing company nationwide, and because Columbia is the capital of South Carolina, we do have a lot of opportunities for interest in this field. And then Russian it sounds a little bit more self-explanatory too, um, but I believe it or not, I have had students who major in Russian. Um, I've had a lot of students who want to major in dance and ballet major in Russian. Um, so they'll double major sometimes um, or maybe minor in dance and major in Russian. Um, and then also students who want to get involved in politics and government one day, maybe even the CIA. So there's a wide range of opportunities for the common market at South Carolina. And that is a picture of our beautiful pool on our campus. I just had to put it out there because it's fall now, but I'm still hanging on to summer. Um, but that is our fitness center. All right, so here is Gamecocks by the numbers. A little bit of a breakdown um, about USC. So on the top left corner, that is our freshman profile from last year's incoming class. Take that with a grain of salt, however, because we are test optional this year. And you probably will hear a lot of us schools talk about that because of COVID. Um, so again, just you know, briefly glance on that and then move on. Um, we have a total of 27,000 undergraduate students and then a total of 35,000 students. We have our own law school and our own medical school, um, as well as numerous um, graduate degree programs. 
Um, we do have 56 nationally ranked, um, which is the most in South Carolina um, programs. And we also are um, top ranked for the nation's best public schools honors college. So if you're somebody who wants to challenge themselves and you want to have rigorous courses um, in your college experience, definitely look into honors college programs, um, especially at South Carolina. And then the Capstone Scholars Program, it's a leadership program. It's just your first two years at USC. It encourages you to um, get involved and um, it's like a leadership program for you to have community service hours, maintain a competitive GPA as well as um, um, get involved and have leadership positions in each organization. Um, it's, a it's a great way to kind of meet new people at, right off the bat when you get to campus. Um, some more stats for you. So we're about 54% female and 46% male. Um, last year's incoming class was about 50-50 in-state, out-of-state. So we are taken over slowly as out-of-staters. Um, and so for a complete breakdown, we're about 44% out-of-state. Um, Virginia is the second largest out-of-state to go to USC. So the first one is North Carolina, and then it's Virginia, um, Georgia, Maryland, New Jersey, and pretty much the entire um, East Coast. We also are number one in the U.S. for international business um, for the past 22 years um, for undergrad and grad, and we have a 17 to 1 student faculty ratio. So what that means is about 85% of our classes on campus have about 50 students or less. Um, so, you know, when you're in your freshman year and you're in those lecture hall classes, it could be anywhere from 50 to 100 people. However, we do have a lot of faculty to make up for that fact that we do have 27,000 undergraduate students. And so once you're in your major and your upperclassmen, those classes do tend to shrink a little bit. Um, and then about 22% of our student body are um, minorities. All right, next for the University of Tennessee, we actually have eight majors that qualify uh, Virginia residents for in-state tuition. So really excited about all the programs that we have to offer. Um, by far the most popular one for my Virginia students is supply chain management. Last year I had about 90 students come to Tennessee um, from Virginia and supply chain management. It is a business degree program. It is ranked in the top five in the nation. Um, so it's a very, very popular program, both for our students to do and also for employers um, to come to our campus and hire our graduates. Um, if you don't know what supply chain management is, basically think about how do things have to get from um, producers to consumers. So think about companies like Amazon. Now with so many things being online, there are a ton of companies that need people that can specialize in supply chain management. So this is a really, really useful business degree. Um, again, that not many people are gonna be graduating with. Nuclear engineering is another popular one. Um, we have one of the oldest and most prestigious programs in the nation. It started in um, 1957. Um, kind of some perks of doing nuclear engineering at the University of Tennessee is that East Tennessee has the largest concentration of nuclear industry anywhere in the world. Um, there's more than 100 nuclear related um, places or nuclear um, related companies that are within 50 miles of Knoxville. One to point out is that we are um, very close to Oak Ridge National Laboratory, which is the largest Department of Energy research facility in the country. So there's lots of great opportunities for our students to do research, also do co-ops and internships. Um, actually, the world's uh, second largest supercomputer is located at Oak Ridge. So um, it kind of goes back and forth between being number one and number two, but right now it's number two. Another really cool major that recently got added is our Disasters Displacement and Human Rights, Rights Program, which is in our anthropology department. Um, that program really examines um, global and local issues like uh, migration, human trafficking, um, human rights. And there's lots of great perks available to those students. Um, for example, we have um, the Forensic Anthropology Lab or Body Farm on our campus, which is one of the, um, the most well-known um, body farms in the country, um, which is either exciting or gross, depending on what you're interested in. Um, we also have educational interpreting for the deaf and hard of hearing. So if you have an interest in sign, la sign language, that could be a good major for you. Um, also interior architecture, that's very similar to interior design. Um, students are looking at designing uh, spaces and different colors and designing and things like that. Um, linguistics and Portuguese, kind of self-explanatory, and then sacred music, um, that's basically if you want to study like church music and that sort of thing. I've never actually had a student do sacred music, so I um, would love for one of you guys to be the first to come to UT and do um, sacred music. All right, next I'll talk a little bit about the University of Tennessee. Um, we are located in Knoxville. Um, Knoxville, Tennessee is about kind of for um, give you some context. It's about six hours or so from Richmond. Um, we're right over the Virginia line, just a little bit past um, Lily at ETSU. Um, 
so I think it's kind of a good location for a lot of Virginia students because it's far enough away from home where you can do something totally different and get a different experience than I think any other university um, in Virginia. Uh, but you can still drive home if you want to. Um, if you don't want to drive home, we also have an airport about 15 minutes to campus, so really easy to get back and forth. Um, one thing I really love about Knoxville and our campus is that it's located right in the um, center of downtown Knoxville. So you kind of get that college town feel when you're on campus. You don't really realize that you're in a city. And then you step off campus and you're right in the middle of downtown Knoxville where there's always fun things to do, lots of great restaurants. Um, we also have lots of opportunities like in Columbia, South Carolina, um, because we are a fairly large city, there are lots of good internship and co-op opportunities for our students. Also, you'll see that the Tennessee River is our um, front yard and our backyard is a Great Smoky Mountain. So we're about an, eight, an hour from the Great Smoky Mountain National Park, um, which is the most visited national park in the country. So we have lots of great outdoorsy opportunities for our students, whether you like to hike or kayak or paddleboard, you can do all of it near our campus. Um, kind of another fun thing is we are one of the only places in the country where you can sailgate instead of tailgate. So that's one of our favorite traditions at UT um, where our fans bring their boats to the games and, and get ready um, for games on their boats. Um, we do have about 24,000 undergraduate students. I think it's a great size because you get all the perks of a big school, big division one athletics, lots of research opportunities, um, but it still feels pretty small. Our faculty to student ratio is 17 to one and 71% of our classes have 50 students or less. Um, another perk of a larger institution is we have over 360 degree programs. Um, you know, maybe you guys are interested in the academic common market majors, but if not, we do have lots of other good programs as well. We have over 600 clubs and organizations, so tons of things you can get involved in, um, whether it's Greek life, fraternities and sororities, or club or intramural sports. We even have a chillin' and grillin' club. So um, there is kind of something for everybody on our campus. Um, and you know, we love for our students to get involved. Um, we have tons of school spirit. I think you'll come, if you come to campus, you'll see a lot of our students wearing orange. So the school spirit um, is very infectious and we have lots of great traditions as well. Um, next, we're going to show you what the tuition savings are with the academic common market. This is just kind of to give you a snapshot of how much money you can save just based on the major that you select. So the savings is different um, based on the institution. Um, the average is typically around $15,000 if you look at all the schools that are in the academic common market. Um, but just so you have an idea of what tuition costs are um, and also how much money you could save. So I won't go into each one individually, but just wanted you guys to be aware of um, how much money you'll save if you decide to do one of the majors that we just talked about. Um, the next slide is just where you can find more information um, about the academic common market. You can look at all the majors that are available for all the institutions that participate. Um, they have lots of frequently asked questions. You can find the coordinator for the academic common market. Um, I know that's kind of a long address. Um, so if you go to Google and you put in Virginia academic common market, the first thing that comes up is going to be um, the academic common market website. Um, so that if you want to learn more about it, you um, certainly can. So hopefully you've had time to write that down. But if not, just Google Virginia Academic Common Market and you'll be good to go. Okay, so we're just going to go into a few FAQs really quick before we break into um, more questions that you guys may have. Just a, com a couple questions to get some ideas rolling for you guys. Um, but one of the first questions that we tend to get a lot of is how do I apply? So there is a process to how to apply to the ACM. So once your participating school has certify that you are going to be in that specific major and you qualify, you can now go ahead and start the process through the state of Virginia um, academic common market. So that site that Amanda was mentioning. So they're going to need to do three things. You're going to need to fill out that application. They do have a PDF version on their website so you can take a look and see uh, what exactly is it looking like, what they're going to ask of you. They're also going to need that acceptance letter that states you are in that specific major and then you are also a full major. So what I was saying before with Coastal, if you come in as a pre-major, let's say in marine science, it's not going to qualify you for ACM. It has to be a full major. So they'll need, they'll be seeing that and looking for that on the acceptance letter. And then they're going to be looking for three documents showing that you are a Virginia resident. And that could be anything from tax documents, your driver's license, vehicle registration, just to name a few. Do I have to reapply every year? The nice part about that is you don't. As long as you don't change your major or schools or transfer to any other school that is not ACM, and you can show that you are still maintaining a full-time enrollment and residency in Virginia, you do not have to reapply at all the next few years that you are in, in that state institution. They do audit it every single year, so if for whatever reason you do transfer out or you switch a major, and maybe you just forgot to mention it to ACM, um, they will audit and track it 
back and we'll remove it from your account if that is ever the situation in the case. So that's what Casey was saying before. Make sure you really truly choose a major that you are passionate about and that you want to pursue as a career path um, as opposed to just taking a major because of that tuition savings program. Um, it is a great opportunity for students, but make sure that you are really making, getting into your mindset that this is what your future is going to consist of with this specific major and not just for the finance side of it. And then how long does the process take to process the application? So once uh, Academic Common Markets uh, has received all the documents, the application, the documents showing your residency and your acceptance letter, it can ultimately take anywhere from four to six weeks. And typically how it works is once they have received everything and they review it, if it all looks good, both you as well as the institution that you applied through the ACM for will receive documentation stating that you are a full major, you are a Virginia resident, and you can go ahead and apply that ACM waiver to their account. So it does take a little bit long, so don't wait till the very end, especially if you are applying and if you're waiting till the very summer um, to fill out all the documents for ACM, that will be cutting it very close. And typically tuition bills get sent out sometime um, in the summertime, whether it's May, June, or July. And with that four to six week time span, that be can be cutting it really, really close to when the first tuition bills are due. So make sure as soon as you get accepted, if you know this is where you want to go, you get that application in and those documents in sooner than later. So some more frequently asked questions that we get. Um, so can I apply for the academic common market before I am accept accepted at a participating institution? So you actually will need to be accepted at the institution before you can get approved for the major. Um, another one would be, can I submit multiple applications for certific uh, certification, certification to participate? I'm sorry, I cannot speak today. Um, in different programs at different schools. So you can only submit one application. So just like Casey and Cameron were saying, just make sure that you are really passionate about the major that you're um, selecting, that it's the school that you really wanna go to and everything like that, because you only get one application. And then the last would be, what if I change my major or move to another state? So you will have to reapply and you will only qualify if you are an eligible program or state. So um, if you ended up changing your major that's not um, approved through the academic common market, then unfortunately it would switch to the out of state tuition for that institution. But if you did reapply and it was for a program that's approved within the academic common market, then you would get approved for the in-state tuition again. All right, and I do um, want to briefly remind you guys that if y'all have any questions, um, it's a great time to utilize the chat feature. So if you haven't noticed that already, you can go ahead and access the chat and type in your question. There's no such thing as a silly or dumb question, um, and we will go ahead and answer those um, along the way. So I will um, finish up this slide, and then we can open them up to questions. So. Um, one question we get a lot is, can I double major? Um, and the answer is no. Um, so if you have a major that is ACM approved, but your other major is not ACM approved, you cannot double major. However, if you have two majors, they both are approved in the ACM, then go for it. Um, a lot of times you can minor in a major that's not a part of the ACM and that will work. A lot of students I know will, you know, major in risk management in the business school at USC and then will minor in finance or something like that, which is also in the business school. So that definitely is um, an opportunity for you to take advantage of. The program I want is not offered in Virginia and it is not on the list of approved programs. What can I do? So um, this does happen uh, quite often. So you can certainly contact the ACM coordinator for Virginia. Um, we actually did not put that, their information on this page because we want to make sure we respect um, their, their time and space right now, but you can find that online. So you know when the opportunity arises, you can go ahead and find that coordinator for Virginia and you can ask them those questions. And then the last one is I don't officially get admit, admitted to my major until I am a junior and have completed other requirements. Can I participate now or do I have to wait? So you do still need to wait um, until you are officially accepted into that program, even though that may be when you are a junior. So just keep that in mind, you know, make sure you talk to your advisor about that. Um, and so because I, I do get a lot of questions from students about that as well. All 
All right. Well, it looks like we have one question, um, and that is, is nursing a part of the academic um, common major or academic common market program for Coastal Carolina? Um, if a major wasn't discussed today, then it is not um, an academic common market um, major at any of our schools. Also keep in mind, if any Virginia public institutions offer a major, it does not qualify for the program. So the kind of the, the purpose of the program is to give you the chance to study whatever you want to study at in-state if your school can or your state cannot provide um, that program for you. Um, so all of all the programs um, that are offered by our institutions and the other participating uh, institutions are not offered at any public schools anywhere um, in the state of Virginia. Um, any other questions that you guys have, feel free to put them in the chat. Um, I'll keep looking at that, but um, just kind of want to point out that um, we've done a, a general overview and for the most part, um, this applies at most institutions, um, but every school is going to be a little bit different. So make sure if you're thinking about um, going the academic common market route that you're reaching out to your admissions counselor. Um, just like all of us, we have um, an assigned recruitment territory and we just work from, with students from Virginia, help you through the process. Um, so always reach out to the schools that you're interested in just to make sure there aren't any little caveats or anything like that. Um, you know, I used to work for an institution that limited it to 30 students in the entire the entire um, school. Um, so, you know, there weren't very many opportunities for it. Some schools like Tennessee, we don't limit the number of students that can participate. So anybody who's in the, those majors um, can get in-state tuition, but it is very different for every school. So just make sure that, that you know what the rules are so that you don't miss anything, because um, there are kind of a lot of steps to getting those in-state tuition benefits. But we're always happy to help um, and, you know, answer any questions that you have. So this is our contact information. Um, if you guys need anything, if you have questions about the academic common market or just our schools in general, we're always happy to help you um, with any questions or anything that you need. So um, any last minute questions or does anybody else have anything else that they want to add? I will say for the student who reached out asking if the nursing program is part of ACM, while it's not part of the ACM, um, our nursing program is specific and it's specifically designed. Um, it's a little complex. So if you would like more information about the nursing program and the opportunities and how it's laid out for incoming freshmen, my contact information is right there on the screen. Please feel free to shoot me an email. I'll be more than happy to go into a little bit more detail and depth about the nursing program and the cost for it too. I also want to point out that, you know, we obviously are not the only schools that have these majors for in-state tuition. So it's kind of up to y'all to do your research and figure out, you know, if you're applying to X, Y, and Z school, see if they have um, the common market available and see if you can get in-state tuition with them. So um, again, it's kind of up to you now to create those, um, those lists, your, your college list, and maybe an Excel sheet of your top places and seeing if they have a common market available for you. Um, and it, maybe even if you're in, let's say it's your sophomore year in college and you wanna change your major, you can certainly do that. You just have to talk to your advisor and still kind of go through the same motions for the common market, even if you are applying as an incoming freshman. So keep that in mind as well. I wanted to make sure that you guys knew there's lots of schools out there that have this opportunity like we do. Awesome. Well, it doesn't look like any other questions have come in. So um, again, if you guys have any, put them in the chat right now. But um, if not, or you think of them later, feel free to reach out to us. And um, we just want to wish you good luck on your college search. Hopefully this has been helpful um, and has kind of shown you that there are ways to go out of state. I think a lot of times your, your parents are, well, don't even want you to look at out of state schools. Um, I can't tell you how often I hear students say that, but there are ways to make it affordable and oftentimes more affordable than it would be to go to school um, in Virginia. So um, thank you guys so much for spending your evening with us. Um, we hope that you learned a lot and um, have a great rest of your evening. I think actually the moderator is going to go on really quickly, so don't leave quite yet. <laughs> yes, hello. Thank you to our panelists. This is great information. And I learned a lot. I'm sure our students did. I want to tell the students that um, after you close your window, your, your very quick four question survey will appear that we would love for you to, to answer for us. And again, you want to remember to sign up for more sessions um, the, on the website and also remind you that recordings will be available. Again, thank you students, parents, and a, a special thank you to our panelists. Everyone have a great night and be safe.
Bye-bye.